Dr. Michael Greger highlights the risks of high sodium intake on mortality, advocating for reduced salt consumption to enhance longevity. In contrast, Dr. James Nicolatonio, author of The Salt Fix and The Mineral Fix, attributes improved exercise capacity and health not to low salt intake, but to balanced mineral consumption and reducing refined sugars. He argues that deficiencies in minerals like potassium and magnesium, coupled with high sugar intake, are the real culprits behind health issues often blamed on salt. Nicolatonio suggests that our natural inclination for salt, unlike the modern tendency towards refined sugar, indicates its essential role in our diet, potentially affecting our brain's reward system and sugar cravings. He emphasizes the importance of minerals, including magnesium, for overall health and performance. Given these perspectives, what does your research indicate about the relationship between salt intake and health and salt intake and kidney health? Both of you. Well, you know, just like you get all the essential fats you need eating a whole plant food diet, and you get all the carbohydrate you need eating a whole plant food diet, you don't have to add sugar to the diet, you don't have to add oil to the diet, you don't need to add salt. A high vegetable content diet has a gram of salt a day and it gets it gets your uh, essential sodium needs met. Sodium is an essential nutrient without which you die. So I mean, we, we all acknowledge you have to get enough salt. The best place to do it, just like all our nutrients, is from whole whole plant foods. Excess salt in the diet, which is uh, common because we have highly processed foods. Uh, many foods, for example, bread, which people like with its 1500 calories per gram is full of salt, oil, and sugar. Oftentimes, if you take away the salt, oil, and sugar, we call it matzah and it's punishment on Passover. So it's hardly the same food without the additions. Meat itself, you know, boiled beef doesn't taste the same as meat when it's served with all kinds of sauces, gravies, etc. So salt, powerful appetite stimulant, leads to passive overeating. If you feed an animal, you know, uh, added salt, oil, and sugar, they get obese. They develop the same disease as we do. If you want people to lose weight, they need to also uh, limit the salt intake because they will, everything else being equal, eat more when there's a higher salt sodium concentration. People say it because it tastes better. Well, of course it tastes better. That's what tasting better means, is resulting in more dopamine stimulation in the brain when the chemicals that you put in your mouth activate that brain response. So my concern with salt is passive overeating, uh, increased propensity towards fluid retention, at least a high blood pressure, all kinds of downstream problems with kidney function, et cetera. You need an essential amount of sodium. You get that from a whole plant food diet. Thank you. So, you know, it's an interesting thing to put salt in the same sentence as potassium and magnesium <laughs> and to immediately start saying that you need all these minerals and blah, blah, blah. If you look at the data, once again, not my opinion, we have very well-designed studies. You can PubMed them right now, and I'm happy to share all the links. What you'll find is you never want to rely on one study. That's the golden rule in medicine. You want to rely on several studies done by several different people coming to the same conclusion. And in medicine, we never say something is 100% accurate because we don't know. And this is what, what makes people mad is, how come you can't say that you're guaranteed to regrow your hair on your head if you eat a plant-based diet? Well, I don't know. I don't have a study for that. And I, I don't have 100% proof. My colleagues, that might have happened. I'm not that lucky. But when you talk about sodium, what's fascinating is, is if you look at potassium, if you look at magnesium, diets that are rich in magnesium and potassium and in randomized studies, what you'll find is a few things. First, from an endothelial function perspective, the lining of your blood vessels contracts and expands better when you're on diets rich in potassium. Now, high potassium will kill you, low potassium will kill you. There's a sweet spot. But inside your cells, you have 20 times the concentration inside the blood. So if your cells break down, they release enough, you die like this. You get an arrhythmia, I can't get you out of the arrhythmia. That's called hyperkalemia. And you'll get into an arrhythmia and it's very hard to get you out unless we know it's coming from potassium, low potassium. Low potassium will cause rhabdo. Your muscles will break down. You will die. So low and high will kill you. But potassium is fascinating. A diet that's rich in potassium, which is once again, by definition, a whole food plant-based diet, you'll find that your endothelial cells they function better. You'll find that your blood pressure is lower. You'll find that the markers of inflammation, inflammation are better. Switch to magnesium. Magnesium is amazing. There are so many incredible benefits. And yet, 
We don't talk about magnesium enough. It's very hard to get toxic on magnesium, but magnesium will improve the endothelial lining of your blood vessels, will improve your blood pressure, is actually protective of your kidney disease in a number of studies. Same thing with potassium. Potassium in studies shows that it protects against chronic kidney disease. In advanced kidney disease, potassium is not your friend. In advanced kidney disease, magnesium can become toxic. Now, for sodium, the data is very clear. Sodium will make the endothelial lining of your blood vessels worse. Sodium will increase the pressure inside your kidneys. It will increase intraglomerular hypertension. Sodium will cause you to spill more protein in the urine. Too little sodium, you die. Too much sodium, you die. Both of those things will cause seizure, coma, and death. So you need sodium. But to put sodium in the same sentence as potassium and magnesium, uh, that that's you know, taking it a bit far in terms of those opinions. But the challenge there is, once again, everybody can claim to be an expert. And my job is never to say I'm an expert. My job is to look at studies and tell you, here are 50 studies that show you this. If you don't like me, that's okay. You don't like my hairstyle, that's okay. Read the studies yourself. Come to your own conclusion. But it is incredibly important that we shift the mindset from people being experts to people giving data. When you look at, for example, Dr. Greger's work, what you'll find is he's not out there saying a plant-based diet is great. He's there, here's all the studies I, I quoted. You don't like me? Okay. You don't like my beard? Okay. Go look at the data. So if we shift in the field of medicine from being opinion-based to being evidence-based, it gives us so much more credibility and it allows us to step away from this concept of that doctors are perfect or somehow you're a PhD, you're perfect. Nobody cares. What they care is my loved one is going to die. Can you help me? I'm vulnerable. I'm coming to you for trust. Can you help me? And that should be our ultimate goal. You know, if you look at a condition like high blood pressure, which is one of the leading contributing causes of death and disability, just and look at the data of the experience at the Children's Health Center. We have retrospective data, 174 consecutive patients with hypertension, 174 people lower their pressure enough to eliminate medication. We've got, we've got prospective studies now with up to one year follow-up data showing that, you know, 28 out of 29 people can normalize their blood pressure. A year later, they're still without uh, uh, their weight rec recurring and they're still able to maintain blood pressure. And we're doing it on whole plant food SOS-free diets. I would love to see the people that are doing high sodium diets and that are getting those kinds of results and maintaining uh, long term outcomes in chronic degenerative disease. You know, I don't see the data. So if show me the data. I mean, no question. Like John McDougall says, everybody loves good news about their bad habits. Everybody would love to be able to eat sugar, salt, oil, you know, chocolate, cheesecake, whatever. Go on the dead Dr. Atkins diet. May his fillet of soul rest in peace. But, you know. That's not what my experience is, and it's certainly not my understanding of what I've read in the literature. I, I think we've got to just stop kidding ourselves. If I asked you how many cigarettes you're going to smoke this year, I assume that both of you would say zero. So that means you're really clear that cigarettes is a non-negotiable hard no. But if I said how much salt are you going to have this year, and that means salts that are on olives, salt that's in your guacamole, salt that's in flat crackers, how, when you say no salt, how serious are you? I know with cigarettes, you mean zero. With salt, how, you know, what degree should we interpret this when you say avoid salt? So I'm going to, I'm never going to be eating more than a thousand milligrams of sodium a day because I eat my food at the True North Health Center where we use whole plant foods. So it's fruits, vegetables, grains, legumes, nuts, and seeds. There is no added salt. Um, so, I know that I'm not going to have any problems there. I'm not going to have any problems at home where sometimes you can get into trouble, even when you're being super diligent is avoiding food. If you're eating other people's food, because other people are going to try to poison you whenever they get a half a chance. So salt contamination happens. If you eat any kind of processed foods, you're going to be getting some contaminated salt. And, you know, the fact is there is some capacity uh, in healthy individuals uh, for sodium variation. But the goal is to not use any added salt. Eat the salt that's inherent in the whole plant foods that you're eating, hopefully every meal of every day.